Good evening. So this is our record release show, uh, and, um, and I'm really glad you're here for it. One dude is glad he's here as well. Um, we're going we're gonna to play a number of songs from the new record, a couple of which you've heard, a couple maybe you haven't. Um, we're going to start with the first two on the record, and then we'll, we'll do some other stuff. I'm just trying to give you an orientation of how the evening is going to go. Uh, this first number is called George Square. She was walking across George Square in the rain And I was high, I was so high in a plane I was trying to see through the clouds Looking for places we'd been Like a sign, like a sunburst Like the letters in your name And oh girl, don't change your hair for me now, I'm on your side. No, girl, don't hide your hands from me now. I am on my way down. She was walking quite slowly all alone. And all the lights in the windows were aglow. But the statues, they were so silent With the rain splashing their heads How bad she wanted to hear them Tell her which way is best So oh, girl, don't change your dress for me now I am on your side No, girl, don't hide your eyes from me now I am on my way down, I am on my way down. spring comes so suddenly and the dress she wore was yellow and the rain was in her hair how bad won't ever tell her I would always be there so oh girl don't change don't change please don't change I am on your side no Girl, don't hide your heart from me now. I am on my way down. I am on your side. I'll be on your side. Heroes and burdens to bear. 
I think there's hope now Light coming through Feels like the first of the year We were all trying to find How to start over And where to begin But all the colors are gone, oh, only ashes remain. They're up to our ankle bones. You pull me close. This has been true all along oh, oh, We're not free as we feel And dreams aren't as simple After we win After all the years in corduroy and silence, in between water and the moon, the water and the moon, I see we all fall down. The knock at the front door, the crack in the wall, the stain on the floorboard. Nothing at all. It's nothing at all. But after all the years, after all the yearning. What is left to say? What is left to say? Oh, isn't it a hard life? Lay your hand inside mine, no minute more. Turn your cheek toward me, a minute more. Oh, baby, don't fall down. Though these are the hard times, though this is the fight, nobody's wrong if nobody's right, and nobody's right.
looking at your shadow holding mine and holding on to mine still holding on to mine well, isn't that a holy sign like maybe we're fine yeah isn't that a free ride out of here I think that that's a sign yeah, I think that's a sign that though we all fall down, the knock at the front door, the crack in the wall, the stain on the floorboard, is nothing at all. If nothing is wrong. The floorboards come repaint the walls. Put on your new dress, high heels and all. 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 Thanks. Uh, so I want to try playing the title track on the record, which is a, a song called Some Kind of Cure. Um, I wrote a, a lot of these songs, as, as you, most of you who've been here before know, of the here being a, a David Berkeley concert, not Rockwood Music Hall. As far as I know, they don't talk about this on there. What's that? Stage two. Sorry. Thank you. Stage two. What, am I plugging it? <laughs> We're all here, we know. Um, I wrote a lot of these songs in Corsica, uh, and <laughs> I, I didn't mean to be rude to whoever that was, probably the guy who owns the place. <laughs> this is the last time we'll be here, so thanks for coming. Uh, I wrote a lot of these songs uh, while living in Corsica, and, uh, and this song actually mentions Corsica. Uh, by name, and I, I've learned um, not to call out this that much because people actually like the song more if they think Corsica is the name of a girl, um, but you're in the know. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Keep your 
distance there are secrets that we keep here that's as close as you will get that's as close as you will ever get So um, this is also the release show for, for my book. And, uh, and so I thought we would do something totally different right now, and I would read you an excerpt from my book. <laughs> which a lot of people said couldn't be done at a club in New York. And uh, we're going we're gonna to prove them wrong. So I wrote a book. It's called 140 Goats and a Guitar. Um, and uh, I wrote it, most of it, in, in Corsica. It basically, it tells, uh, it tells 13 stories that um, were the sort of inspiration founding stories for the 13 songs on the record. And uh, it comes with a download code for the record, which is a weird move because it means I'm competing with my book, with my record. Um, <laughs> that's all right, though. Um, so the idea is that you would, you would if you want, um, read a story and then listen to the corresponding song. Um, I really recommend you listen to the song first, 
then read the story, then listen to the song again, but I, I know that I can't ask that much of you, so. <laughs> so I'm gonna read you the song that sets up our, or the story that sets up our next song, which is called Parachute. Uh, and Parachute um, tells, tells the story in the song of a, of, a, of a car driving back to Massachusetts, a guy and a girl, and, and the car breaks down, much like the old song, Red. Um, and uh, on the side of the road, the, uh, the girl has sort of an epiphany, and, uh, and, and they fall in love and realize that they're meant for each other. It's, it's a very similar narrative, which I, I'm sort of just realizing now as I'm explaining this to you. Uh, but um, but so, so the, the, story is, the story is called Empty Tank Denial, um, and, and uh, I'm only going to read you an excerpt, but the, but the excerpt uh, is going to carry on a little, so you're going to have to be patient. Um, and uh, basically, the, the story, it starts, it starts out with me uh, explaining to you um, my philosophy of gas tank management, which, as some of you know, uh, is that I like to drive uh, a tank until it is completely dry. Uh, ideally, you're coasting into the gas station to refuel. Uh, and I don't know if any of you have that, but um, that's an okay uh, philosophy to, to have and stand by, unless you've, in fact, run out of gas, in which case you should abandon that and come up with another plan. Um, and this tells the story of two times when I ran out of gas. Um, and, uh, and, and, and that sort of was what led to the, the writing of this song. But, so this is called Empty Tank Denial, and after I explain my philosophy. Uh, a few years ago, I convinced Sarah, that, that's my wife, uh, to come with me to a gig in Nashville. It was late spring, and Sarah was four months pregnant with Jackson. That's our son. <laughs> I don't actually write that in the book. You know that by now, but... Um, she, she, she wore sandals and a sundress and looked beautiful sitting in the passenger seat, her growing round belly poking out between the seat belts. We were coming up from Atlanta and the fuel indicator went on near the lakes around Chattanooga. There were trucks roaring by on both sides and Sarah had been nagging me to fill up for a couple of exits. I was talking to someone on the phone though and not paying much attention. It was the first time I had really felt it. The gas pedal went down easier than normal. Oh, all, the, all the way down in fact. <laughs> But, but the car didn't respond. A, a little bit, maybe. There was a wheeze and a slight push forward, but it definitely did not feel normal. We were in the center lane on I-24. There was barely a shoulder. There were trucks all over the road. I think we're out of gas, I said, flat and calm, as if I had little to do with it. <laughs> You've got to be fucking kidding me, Sarah barked back. Not, not, not the least bit calm. <laughs> the steering wheel became pretty tight, but I managed to get us into the right lane and then onto the shoulder, which is not the easiest thing to do as you're rapidly decelerating and other cars aren't. Nope, uh, out of gas, empty. I tried to sound nonplussed, almost sweet. I made a, a zero sign with my finger and thumb, <laughs> smiled, and then I reached out for her hand. Uh, a, a move that I can now admit was inappropriate. <laughs> Sarah snapped her hand back and out of reach. It's impressive how quickly a coasting car will slow to a stop when there is even the slightest uphill. It shows you how important the gasoline engine really is in propelling a vehicle. <laughs> All right. I was trying hard to make as little of the situation as possible. It's fine, it's fine. I'll just run up to the exit, I said with confidence as we inched to a stop in the car wide shoulder. You stay here, I'll be right back. Sarah was furious. You crazy? She yelled over the roar of traffic. I'm not staying here, we're on a fucking highway. And she was right, the shoulder was tiny. Trucks were everywhere. What the hell was I thinking? Although I could see the exit just to bend up the road, highways were, were not designed for the common pedestrian. Uh, <laughs> A half mile can feel really, really far when cars are blowing by you at 80 miles per hour and your wife is pregnant and pissed. <laughs> I kept trying to put my arm around her shoulder to pull her toward me. Not happening. I also kept trying to convince her that the gas station would be a lot closer if we took the hypotenuse across the field down the embankment to our right. But Sarah didn't like how it looked. No way, she said. We have no idea what's in that field. I wasn't sure what she was afraid of. Snakes? Bodies? <laughs> But, uh, but I knew better than to argue, so I held my tongue. We trudged on up the highway toward the exit where we would then jug handle back to the Exxon. It was a good decision. After maybe a minute of walking, a beat-up Buick took pity on us and pulled over. Y'all need some help, a lady hollered back at us, her head poking out from the passenger side window. Her southern drawl was basically unintelligible. He ran out of gas, Sarah shouted back, waving her thumb in my direction. <laughs> And it was true, it was my fault, not ours collectively, and yet the third person pronoun still stung a little. <laughs> Y'all hop in, we're getting off anyway, the lady yelled. We squeezed in beside two extremely large children of undeterminable ages. 
I remember accents so southern and strong that there was little point trying to talk. Yet, I also remember that Sarah, who isn't normally very talkative among strangers, couldn't wait to chat it up with them. As if, uh, after driving for two hours with me, she finally felt that she was among people she could relate to. <laughs> this wasn't his first time, you know, Sarah announced immediately as I closed the door. He's always almost running out of gas. The entire few-minute drive involved them collectively ridiculing me and suggesting that Sarah would be better off making her way alone in the world, or, s <laughs> or staying and raising our baby with them. Luckily, she didn't agree to either proposition, and we both got out of the back seat of the Exxon, thanking them warmly. I bought a jerry can, put in a gallon or so, and we began our trek back to the car. This time, the temptation to cut across the Wendy's parking lot and out across that field was too strong, even for Sarah, and we set off. It seemed like a good idea for the first five minutes or so. The grass was long, and there was a strange and unique post-industrial American beauty to the scene. <laughs> and, there, and there we were, holding hands now, as Sarah had finally begun to soften smile a little and let me back in, walking across this oddly empty expanse of unused grassland, a vintage leather handbag in her other hand, a red plastic jug of fuel in mine. This postmodern calm ended when the field started to get a bit wet. <laughs> uh, marshy is a word one might use. Uh, the marsh quickly turned to bog, and the bog became more or less like a sunken swamp. At first we figured it was just going to be a couple puddles, a wet patch. You figure something like that will dry up. So we forged ahead, but, but then, before we knew it, we were in deep enough that it was really unpleasant. We were too far to turn back. Needless to say, Sarah dropped my hand. She slogged on ahead. Who knew what we were walking through? Up until that moment in Sarah's pregnancy, I had been worried about anything and everything she breathed or put in her mouth, anything that touched her skin, went in her hair. Now I had led her into the runoff from a major interstate, a few fast food restaurants, a couple gas stations, and Lord knows what other kinds of crap. When we came to the base of the hill above which was the highway in our waiting car, the land began to dry out. Thank God I shouted up at Sarah. She didn't respond or even look back. She, she was waiting for me, arms at her hips, looking off toward the hill and sort of shaking her head. There's a frickin' fence here, she screamed. It was low enough to scale, but there was this small strip of barbed wire curling on top of it. It was just barely barbed, but it was barbed, and Sarah was still pregnant. Should we go back, I asked nervously. She said, hell no, and without hesitation, chucked her sandals and bag onto the other side, then up and over. Man, I was in love with her. <laughs> it took me quite a bit more maneuvering, but we both, made it out without, we both made it without scratches or cuts. We put enough gas in to get us back to the Exxon, and then we filled up the proper way. We washed all the muck off our legs in the restroom and drove the rest of the way to Nashville in silence. A couple years went by without incident. Jackson was born, we moved to New York, then we moved to Corsica. Upon returning to America, we purchased a fuel-efficient hybrid vehicle, a Prius. It has a computer screen that tells your average mileage per gallon, and it also gauges what you're getting at the moment. You can watch the bar drop as you rev the engine and see it soar to 100 miles per gallon when you coast down a hill. For the first few months driving that car, I was obsessed with the screen. It changed the way I drove. I no longer hurried anywhere. I drove a lot slower. I took my foot off the gas, using gravity whenever possible. <laughs> I looked condescendingly on drivers who honked and cut me off. I certainly looked condescendingly at drivers of big SUVs. I wasn't necessarily a safer driver, just a slower, more self-righteous one. <laughs> My habits pissed everybody off who drove with me. It feels like we're in a golf cart, Jordan would say. <laughs> I'd ignore him and go on and on about my mileage while we rolled to whatever gig we were heading to. My driving eventually returned to normal, though, and as it did, I found that my empty tank denial was still strong. In fact, it was perhaps stronger. In the Prius, it seemed literally impossible to run out of gas. <laughs> I got almost 60 miles to the gallon on good days. The computer told me everything. I could now estimate how much gas I had with near pinpoint accuracy. Because of this technology, when Jordan and I were en route to a show in Memphis, I knew we could make it another 10 miles to refuel at the exit that had a Panera. <laughs> I ignored his advice at each of the prior three exits to get gas. I don't regret waiting until the Panera exit. What I do regret, however, was that I didn't pull right into the gas station when we got off. I, I insisted we eat first. When we got back into the car and I pressed the ignition button, a red triangle with an exclamation point lit up. I hadn't seen that one before, so I just ignored it and pulled back out toward the gas station. We made it maybe 30 feet down the road, and then the gas pedal had that familiar lightness. I knew the feeling. You don't forget it. I turned to Jordan. Empty, I said, <laughs> as, as, nonchal as nonchalantly as possible. The look Jordan gave me was a little different than Sarah's had been when I told her we ran out of gas. There was still some love behind Sarah's glare, if buried deep. Maybe it said, I can't believe I married you, but it still said somewhere, this is the man I married. Jordan's look was simpler, something like, you're a stupid, stupid man. <laughs> <laughs> the, ir 
The act seemed to trump three years of touring together, seemed to negate any impressions made by long late night conversations on the road, on stage, banter, songs written, etc. He just shook his head and decided that my brain was pea sized, my skill set non existent. <laughs> And as I set off on foot across the I-20 overpass to purchase three bucks of gas and yet another red jug, I had to admit he was kind of right. For the most part, I learned my lesson, if a little late. I haven't run out of gas since, but I'm still obsessed with what can happen when there is an unforeseen break in the norm and we're thrust suddenly out of the ordinary. There's a part of me that wants to be lying on the hood of the broken down car under the autumn sky and parachute. Certainly, I'd rather be on that hood than trying to explain to my pregnant wife why we need to little, take a little walk down the interstate. It's, it's one reason I like songwriting. You can change a detail or two and create something romantic out of something that might just be a really big pain in the ass. But I don't think that that sort of romance is only possible in fiction. And maybe that's why I still don't see the refuel indicator in as urgent a light as I should. I can't seem to quite kick the curiosity of the unknown, wondering if we'll make it to the next exit. And if we don't, what will await us on the side of the road? This is Parachute. You guys did really well. <laughs> I don't want to give you the wrong impression. Not all the stories are funny. A couple are, but... While Jordan's tuning, let me introduce the rest of my fine band. This is Bill Titus over here on the guitar. Todd Erk on the large bass. Dan Vonnegut on the drums. Your heart is like a parachute. It only opens when you fall. Ba 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 I've been waiting for the fall to get back where you are. Top down and talk about it all. Top down, top down. Your heart is like a parachute. It only opens when you fall. Drive them back to Massachusetts in your daddy's car. Broke down, yeah, we broke down. Lying back against the windshield cars, we're blowing by. You cry, wrapped up in my arms. You cry, you cry. Your heart is like a parachute. It only opens when you fall. Your heart is like a parachute It opens when you're falling down Look at me, I'm falling now Let me pull you open An old autumn sky You and I Trying to see so far Oh, you and I, autumn sky, trying to see too far. Like a parachute, it 
keeps us both from falling down Your heart is like a parachute It keeps us both from falling now ba 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 do another driving song. Got a, plenty of those. Um, no breakdown in this song, just a very difficult merge onto um, one of the lesser known bridges in the area, despite my efforts. The Willis Avenue Bridge and David Berkeley are rising and falling together. <laughs> She's driving home Sunday morning. With the heat turned up, the windows roll down to the edge. Yesterday snow for the first time. Now no one's on the West Avenue Bridge. Used to be a hard merge. Used to be a hard merge. Thinking back on New York City The first boy she kissed, the first boy that she crossed Everybody's in their 20s Look who got married, look who's lost Used to be a heartbreak, used to be a heartbreak Used to be a heartbreak and the fall of a hundred days. A hint of an opening. On days like this, it's hard to pull over. It's hard to hold all of the memories in her mind. She tries to readjust the rear view so no one has. To ever fall far behind Used to be much harder Used to be much harder She used to be much harder And the fall of a hundred things The hint of an opening Yeah, the fall of a hundred things The hint of an opening all the glass in New York City It should be harder to hide Not so hard to find Your way back home They can take back all their pity It's not a one-way ride Nowhere to hold on No going home Nowhere to slow down Nowhere
used to be a hard march. Uh, is Peter in the room still? Why don't you come up and play a couple? an ordinary day Everything seemed to be okay Didn't hurt you These are the scars you never show She is a fire sign Day or near, and then you go. Here is a photograph. What do you see? I'm sorry, it's just me. Oh, in the aftermath, it's hard to breathe and harder to believe. Deceive you. And these are the bones you had to find. The echoes in your mind. You surrender. These are the lessons that. Here's the world's concern. One day or near, and then you burn. Here is a photograph. What do you see? There's nothing there but me. Oh, in the aftermath, it's hard to breathe. To believe even just your sounds and all your cards are down even just a sound let me lay you down you don't have to make a sound Surrounds you. These are the lessons that you learn. She is a fire sign, you know. One day or near, and then you go. One There's a steel mill shut down when spring came. Dad gave his life there, I was doing the same. Now I don't know what to do with my days. The kingdom comes to workmen, so the preacher he says. And his voice is sometimes, well, you know. The devil comes a knocking, and the bottle gets low. Oh, won't you sing with me, please?
liked working there. Fire and the shovel and the smoke in my hair. Oh, but Lord, it's all I know. I miss being needed, having somewhere to go. There's these voices, sometimes, well, you know. The devil comes a knocking and the bottle gets low. Oh, won't you sing with me, please? Oh, de lee. Oh, de la. Oh, de lee. Sing with me, please. Oh, de lee. Yeah, there's a woman who gave me the will. Her name is Gracie. She believes in me still. My name is Joseph. It could well be Joel. I don't mean to harm you with a hurt that I hold. Cause it's a story heard around each bend. A man works his heart out and is broke in the end. Come on, sing with me, please. Oh, to leave. Oh, to Suppose I do it again. Homesick is hard when you don't know just where it is that you come home. I don't know if this roof's gonna hold. It's all so cold. It's been snowing too hard, I fear. Yes, I know it's pretty here, and the air is clear. But the years aren't passing fast enough this way. Maybe you can say. I'm not sure how I'm calling out for that. I'm crying out for that. Cause homesick is hard when you don't know just where it is that you come.
from days gone by come back through time come find me come quickly come hear the words i say When you come down When you come down When you come down Jefferson, I heard your tears fall down Over the fall of the rain What easy you and I we're never that much the same Rain on the road across the Delaware Nearly washed us away How come philosophy folds in the light of the day? How come the leprosy ain't everything away? A piece of the West broke away A piece of the West broke away Washed up like the river snows in Pennsylvania, there's a bridge that broke the water, washed it on by. What was the fighting for? Who remembers the song? The boy was king, he was a prodigy in love with everything. the blood and the wine.
Still walk. 
walking down some road. But Lord, he's trying hard to learn what to build and what to burn. And all he wants is to return. Some familiar ground and singing, Lord, please come down. Oh, Lord, please come down. Oh, Lord, come down. Oh, Lord, please come down. Oh, Lord, come down. Oh, Lord, please come down. the Brooklyn Bridge, we crossed the ocean wide, we took all of our things, we kept our open eyes for more than a century, took more than our blood 
and bones more than just you and me to make this place our home if you love someone don't be afraid to fall what could it mean to win if you can't lose it all and i know the stars they fall sometimes the sky falls too sometimes the long freight train it don't stop for me or you in the end in the end keep your heart Okay. Yeah, this is an old refrain I sang when you lay down. Though it may sound the same, everything's different now. I know you walk away over that mountain there. If I could stay with you, I'd follow you everywhere. But there are some things so hard, I wish they wouldn't bruise. Everyone that you love, you will one day lose. And one day I'll have to go. I'll travel further still, and I will not return no matter how strong my will but you know these winter winds will soon be settling even the sun will shine one day it will be spring oh it's hard i know to carry on go with grace my son I will stay right with you now let the rain come pouring down let the rain pour through your walls i don't care let fall let fall down that way but out of town they say they always say let's disregard the way they ring those bells disregard the television too here is what we'll do we'll stay in bed what a pouring down It's got your name. Glass says tremble, glasses shake. They fall right from your face. They fall like flames. Blame it on the strange light in the air. Or blame it on the wind caught in your hair. Blame it on no. It's a hurricane The rain has got your name It's got your name Oh, it's a twisted game The wind has caught your name It's a hurricane Where is the wisdom in the wind? What would blow us down some? I know, yeah, 
go ahead and blow our bodies round. We'll go ahead and try to sink this town. Yeah, go ahead and blow. It's a hurricane. The rain's got your name. It's a hurricane. Thank you very much. Good night.